Coming up, how Brexit has affected the UK entertainment industries and my own business, an actors agency in particular. And I'll be chatting to Gordon Griffin, MBE, about how Brexit directly put paid to his role as casting director at the English Theatre of Hamburg. <laughs> Broadcasting wasn't covered by the Brexit deal. UK-based broadcasters such as the BBC, ITV, Channel 4, Sky and so on are no longer allowed to operate television channels and on-demand services within the European Economic Area. This is a huge hit to their income and will impact the number of productions they commission and reduce the amount of work available for British actors within TV along with other TV professionals. The television, film and live performance industries are all highly dependent on the principle of free movement. The loss of freedom of movement means that the production companies must now look to the individual destination country's domestic immigration system. It's an absolute nightmare. 30 different countries in the EEA, each with their own regulations and any British entertainment professional without an EU passport simply cannot stay in the Schengen area for more than 90 days in 180, ruling out most European theatre tours, for example, and most feature films, which can take four, six, or even 16 months to film on location. The UK entertainment industry was worth an estimated £76 billion before Brexit, compared, by the way, to the UK fishing industry, worth less than one billion. Yet Brexit seemed to be all about the fish. But whatever, both industries have been completely screwed over by Brexit, that's for sure. Up until 1st of January this year, I personally regularly found my actors' work on English language feature films being shot in Eastern and Central European countries like Slovenia, the Czech Republic and Romania. Often these were for Hollywood studios who actually preferred native English speaking actors to the local hires. But those opportunities are now completely gone and have cost my clients alone well over £100,000 annually based on a typical year one in the EU. Another revenue source that Brexit completely destroyed was the regular work my clients used to get at the English-speaking theatres all over continental Europe, including those in Vienna, Frankfurt and Hamburg. And joining me now is Gordon Griffin, MBE, erstwhile casting director at the English Theatre of Hamburg. Gordon, tell me a little bit about your background and how you got involved with the English Theatre of Hamburg. Well, um, I'm an actor, been an actor for about 50 odd years, um, doing everything in the theatre, television uh, as well, lots of radio, lots of broadcasting. And because of my radio connections, I got involved in audio books and I think that's probably uh, what I'm known for now, yes. I've recorded about 930. As far as the English Theatre of Hamburg is concerned, from 19, 1990, I think it was, I became their resident casting director, which was great because I managed to be able to fit it in with all my other work. And so four, four plays a year I cast right. for the English Theatre. Yes, and that was all from actors based in the UK? That was absolutely, yes. It's a good question because... There was a point early on where we thought we might like to use a real live American actor or right. an Australian actor. The problem was for them to work at the English theatre, they, they needed a visa. Uh, of course. And yes. there, were, there was no guarantee. It took ages. Yes. We tried this with one actor. It took ages and ages and ages for the, the people to come back and say, yes, you could have the visa. Right. We couldn't start rehearsing. We couldn't start rehearsing until everybody had got their their working oh, status. Yes. In this, so we had to wait till the... And in the end, because it was taking so long, we had to abandon that idea. So they, they came to the conclusion the best thing to do was just stick to EU actors. Um, and so uh, that's what we did. Can you just tell me, how did Brexit change things for you and the English Theatre of Hamburg? It was absolutely catastrophic right. it was a disastrous because you can't work at the english theater of hamburg unless you're a member of the of eu so suddenly we weren't members of the eu so i was made redundant which was fine i've been doing it for a long time it didn't matter but it meant the english theater of hamburg couldn't use english no. actors i mean it's a crazy situation mm. so so nobody from the UK, now that we're not a member of the uh, European Union, can work at the English Theatre yeah. of Hamburg. I mean, it's really 
it's a real tragedy. When I say catastrophic, I yes. mean catastrophic. I just feel so sad that all the actors who get a wonderful chance to work there, playing great parts, that chance is there no more. That door is absolutely firmly closed. Now, the English theatre uh, recognises that there's a huge talent pool here that can't be used anymore. And so what they're doing, they're trying to negotiate with the government, with the municipality of Hamburg, to see if there was some way that this can be overturned. But at the moment, the situation is this, that if they're casting a play, they, ha they, ca they, ca they can't use... UK actors anymore. Right. And, so um, those Brexiteers, uh, I Gordon, that tell us, oh, there's ways around these things. I mean, you've explained how it's just not practicable for a, a, a stage production to go through a, a visa application loop. It, it's just not practical, is it? Well, no, it, it, it takes too long. There's so much paperwork and there's no guarantee at the end of the process. Yeah that you're going to get the visa, yeah. it, you know, so you could wait all that time. You've got your, you've cast your actor, you wait six weeks or seven weeks or how long it takes. Uh, uh, and then at the end of that process, they say yes. no. Yeah. Then what do you, yeah. then what do you do? You have to start the whole process again. Yeah. Uh, and you can't just don't, you don't have that no, sort of time. No, no. It's, it's been made so difficult. The drawbridge has come down and it's very, very hard to pull it up again. Even the pathetic and scant Brexit deal that this government uh, negotiated, it, it didn't even cover the UK entertainment industries at all. So there's absolutely no agreement that helps us, our industry at all. Wherever you look, it's, um, it, 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 there is this wall and we can't do anything about it. And the government doesn't give a damn, it seems to me. Uh, as you know, Gordon, but just for the, uh, the benefit of the viewers, we get something called breakdowns, casting breakdowns. And as an agent, I probably get 100, yeah. maybe even 200 on a busy day. And so many of them are for jobs in Europe. And they start off by saying, please submit only actors with an EU passport. And, and that's, you know, it's really impacted yes. my, my business. There are so many organisations thankfully, like yours, who are working very hard to rejoin. And it's very exciting. So we have to keep banging away and banging away. But at the moment, I can't see the light at the no, end of the tunnel. No. It's a no-win situation. But having said that, we just have to press on and press on. And I'm sure that at some point we will rejoin. I just would like to think it, it will be in my lifetime. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate your time. That's fantastic. But keep up the good work. Thanks a lot for watching the show. Leave a comment down below. We'll be back with a new video on Wednesday.